So welcome everyone to yoga here at Bonvo again. We're in, uh, we're in full retreat mode here. So, um, but I'm, I'm happy and so, so is really. We were just chatting. Um, uh, so what we might do is, what we might do is go over some of the, some of the key things that we've been doing that mobilize the spine and flexion and extension and start to give you a feeling of where you are with the spine and how, how the limbs support this movement and how it leads to, um, to easy and happy rotations. So similar to the class we did last time. And, um, and I might work a little bit with Ellie. We, we had been looking at a shoulder discomfort and things. So, um, uh, let me help you help you remember that whatever we're doing, it's never about moving towards some kind of ideal practice or ideal body. Uh, never, never works. It's never helpful. Often it leads to injury, but actually, actually relaxing into discovering how muddled and wonderful yoga can be, even though there's biology and, and the science behind it, but it's so individual, so individual. And people often end up in classes where they think, oh my gosh, I think I'm the only person who can't do this. And then they never continue. And that's a pity because I think it's much more wonderfully idiosyncratic and, and sweetly funny, actually, how we all move. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So yeah, I've been calling that the spirit of nearness, you know, risking to, to relax near to your sense of self moving. Of course, there is no separation, but we live where we are really separating all the time. We're in a YouTube and we're looking and watching and wondering if the shape is right. And little, some signposts are helpful, but too much of that is. So let's just start lying down. Start lying down and let's start with the legs straight. Um, of course, it, it shouldn't make you uncomfortable and it can do on some people's sacrums or some people's mid backs, legs straight can be uncomfortable. But um, just, just let go into the straight legs and straight arms, knowing that when you straighten your legs, you you allow the spine to have its curves so don't get irritated by your curves but enjoy them and feel so you're going to feel especially what the lumbar curve is doing and how it's what it's doing to the sacrum and what it's doing to the thoracic cage if you if you're like me and you have high amplitude curves italian lower back and upper back curves, which I've inherited from my Sicilian family. That's one thing, but you may, you may be more flat backed, you know, you may have a sacrum that really sticks out in a particular way and, and not to mention rotation. So we straighten the legs and you let yourself into that feeling. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, very often, we feel in movement classes and in yoga that we're all we're trying to get the back straight well no you're not trying to get the back straight you're trying to get as much space between heaven and sky between heaven and earth as possible between ground and sky not you're not you're not medicating the curves of your body they're wonderful of course as we get more length wonderful things happen to those curves, wonderful accordion-y resiliency things happen. That's lovely, but it's not a shape that we're fixing. So the legs are straight, feel into the curves of your body. And as you feel into that, notice the places where your body is most clearly resting on the ground. So it's going to be your bum, it's going to be your rib cage, of course, and it's going to be your head. If you're missing one of those three pieces, you know, 
I don't know. That's really, you may need to call emergency. <laughs> but so, and then where your bum is resting on the ground, feel if it, if it feels curved or sharp, th these are not judgments, but just let yourself into the world of your pelvis on the ground. Feel, how is that? And so this is also a question for you. Are you able to really rest your pelvis on the floor or is it being pulled hither and thither and you can feel down into the legs so are the legs dropping away from the pelvis let's say down to the heels and resting or do you feel they're jammed in Does that make sense mm -hmm. or they allow or the lower back so very often I feel like my legs are you know, they're like marathoners legs or something, and they never let my spine be quiet. So that's been a big, but it could be, it could be much more that it's your low back or higher up, your arms, your chest, your face. Mm -hmm. The ribs, the lower ribs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Feel lifted, yeah. And that's normal, more normal with legs straight than with legs bent. Mm -hmm. So just let that be. Yeah. Let that be. But notice the feeling and let it be. Yeah. So then we go to the rib cage. So how does that rib cage feel? So you, you were saying my lower ribs are a bit up. But all of you will, all of you may feel this is the place where I rest the most or my pelvis was. My rib cage is more known. And feel into the weight of it, into the weight of the rib cage, down into the lumbers, up into the neck, out into the arms. How is that for you? My shoulder weight puts me in. I'm kind of heavy on this. Heavy on the heavy on the right one, yeah. which is the one that bothers you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, heavy on the right one. I'm not sure I'm aware of my ribs because it feels that thing. Uh -huh. The right shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else may be feeling that it's the spine. You know, the spinous processes are pushing into the floor back there. Mm -hmm. Or nothing, or nothing. It's pelvis and head. And I don't feel so all these variations. And what's wonderful is if you if you open the world of perception with having a right or wrong, then you're in the garden of your body. You know, then you're gardening. And then there are lots of things, you know, I lie, I don't like this feeling, there's pain, there's not pain, I feel connected or I don't know what he means, weight of my chest. All of that is a richness that is growing in, this, in the undergrowth and overgrowth of the garden. Okay, so we have the pelvis with its legs dropping off. We have the chest with its arms dropping off. So just feel, feel these arms on the floor. Do they feel like they're dropping away from the pelvis? They're being pulled in. Arm may be prevalent. I always feel that one side, I'm not doing it right now, but I think it's my left side, is sinks into the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like I'm tilting and that the both limbs on that left side kind of sink into the floor, whereas the other ones are laid on top of something. Yeah. And then there's the head, you know, how is your head resting on the ground? And we, in many, many classes, we've looked at the support you may need. So get a folded blanket or a little book or something. If you want a bit of support under your head, how does that feel, Ellie? Is it easy? Yeah. But for me, it's better. It's much better if I start with a with a centimeter under the I can see you you have a lovely long neck, so it's easy. But what would happen if just in terms of that pressure we felt, right? 
and the hyperextension. What happens if I give you that? That may be a lot. Until better. Yeah. So what feels different in the better? relaxes so see i just actually this looks a, a lot to me but it, i mean you're you're the one who should be evaluating so and it's nice you didn't reject it and go no 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 right mm -hmm. because that's another way also no no i have the perfect position for my head so you can put something under that you then reduce if you lift lift you know and come back down so you can play with different over time putting more or less but lift your head again. What you can also do is roll up a bit of towel or blanket so that you've got a rolly bit under the neck. Yeah, and lift your head. And then you have a bit of support under the head. So that you're teasing, <clears throat> you're teasing your neck to, into a bit of curve, you feel? Mm. Whereas your tendency from what you've learned so far, right, is to be, to make yourself long. Mm -hmm. Maybe also because you feel it helps the shoulder, but the more, and we, we worked a little bit last time, the more I look, the more you can let go. So the more you can have a bit of curve here, you feel that? Mm -hmm. And then the more you can have quote unquote, a bit of slouch here and relax, then the more room your spine has, something new which is probably to be even longer <laughs> yeah yeah you see when i touch here i can feel there's a lot of activity and then strength and also tension and, but you see i can see your neck is happy to make this curve yeah, yeah. okay so do you see what i did with my hands you you especially if you've done a lot of yoga or dance you know if you if you let your head tilt back and not worry that you're doing something wrong because your neck is shortening but you just let yourself into that playful feeling of oh maybe that's helpful yeah how is that it's different right so normally can you see me so normally you just naturally do that because you learned, and it's not a bad thing, but many of us then overcorrect. So we over position the head and then we over flatten, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. Whereas of course, being like that is not helpful either, but there is a real natural place inside and the head position is setting, it sets the logarithm. So normally you're way here. Yeah. You see, it's quite a few centimeters. Whereas look, I'm pushing this vertebra forward. <coughs> So from the outside, that looks gorgeous because it looks long, but I see a curve and you smiled, you know, you mm -hmm. sense something different. Yeah. So play, play with, you, you know, this applies everywhere. You know, this applies everywhere to the way the pelvis tilts. You can always put something under your back if it gets tired or you do have a sacrum that sticks out. You can always support back and neck. And if you're feeling playful and you're having your own private spa yoga moment, you know, you can even put something under the knees. It's, it's really, and we haven't bent the knees yet, but it's, can you feel? It's, it, you start to play with how the curves talk to each other, not how we should get rid of the curves. You know, how they, they're trying to talk to each other all the time. And they're deeply linked into who we are and how we behave. So it's nice to be free and playful about it. So I got a blanket for myself too. Yeah, so here we are with a bit of head support if you, if you need. And you're lying with your legs straight and you're just taking in this give and take and pull and push of curves, which is marvelous. The, amount of energy we have in our spines okay now we're going to just let the right leg turn out a little so let the foot flop out it's probably already doing that and then we're going to drag the foot up with the leg slightly turned out like i'm doing and leave the foot on the floor and then we're going to bring it so that it's flat 
Yeah, perfect. So that then the foot is flat and it's on the ground. And then we're just gonna let the leg drop out and slide. If your mat is irritating you, you can tuck it up and get it out of the way. So that's different from flexing and lifting the leg. Because once you've done that, all the flexor and extensors have gone to war and you're back in your pattern, which we've been trying to play with. So leg turns out, right leg again, it comes up, foot is flat. Notice the feeling and then let the leg fall out and let it slide long. And then coming up again, you can rock it a little from side to side. Yeah, and just enjoy that feeling of leg and pelvis talking to each other and then it falls out, slides long. And now notice the, the way you are perceiving both legs. One may feel longer or heavier or more on the ground or more released from the spine. Now the left leg, it turns out, it slides up, foot is flat. Really be aware of the fullness of the foot on the ground. And I noticed that as my right leg let go, the tension through the spine, the whole spine changed. Yeah, there's the foot and then you're playing with that. You're playing with this side to side rocking of the leg is causing the femur to reset itself in the cave where the head of the femur lives. The cave is called the acetabulum. And very often through our everyday way of being, we force it into one corner of the cave or another. And then, and then we're kind of stuck. You know, that's often why, one of the reasons why we get in meditation, the leg goes numb because we started meditating and the leg wasn't free. Mm -hmm. Even though we can sit cross-legged and it's all fine. And then it's agony. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm just adding my weight, but just letting it rock. You know, letting it rock is helping you to reset the position and to let it remap. Yeah. And our soft tissue is full of receptors that uh, measure things like gliding and rocking and juddering. A lot of them have Italian names, I'm not sure why, but like Pacini receptors and Ruffini receptors. And they're not, it's, it's not in the <clears throat> nerve system. You know, we're used to thinking that it's the nerves that give us all the information, but these receptors are in the soft tissue. So they're all around. So we know that the soft tissue, the fascia and the membranous tissue is much more awake and able and to make us move than we thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just take that in, you know, take the, the way we're connected in. I don't know, I think there was only one or two on that leg. So slide up and down on the left leg, maybe while I was nattering away a little bit more. I can take this out. Yeah. And the rocking, and then let it slide down and then bring. Yeah. You see that ripples right up to your head. And as you work with the legs, I'm watching you release around the mouth and the eyes, letting the face soften, maybe swallow. So you're, you're miles away from shapes. You're in the garden and you're looking at the woodruff and the hellebores and the things growing and yeah, lovely. And so all parts of you start to talk to each other. Okay. Beautiful. Did you see that? Yeah, it's like it's getting longer. Longer. Good. Okay, so let's times with both legs. With both legs, um, you can start down or up. So both legs roll out and you bring them up. And then you let them rock towards and away. You can widen your feet a bit. So this leaning towards is a wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> and it seems like it's disappeared. 
from yoga poses. <clears throat> but it's marvelous. When you let the two femurs lean against each other, put your warm, soft hands on your groins. You're actually letting the femur sink into the powerful, rich, leggy pelvis world. Yeah, that's it. You can play with tilting your pelvis a little bit one way and the other, a little towards the lumbers, a little towards the tail. The legs are leaning against each other. You can even joggle it a bit, joggle the tilt. Yeah. And then the legs go wide from each other and you let them slide long. And just feel what's happening. Yeah. And one more time, open, slide up, roll onto the feet, rocking of the legs, letting them really rest against each other. Okay, so let's stay with legs bent. Let's stay with legs bent. Now, take your upturned palms and just the fingertips and just touch with your finger pads down into your lower back, just a little bit. Don't hurt your shoulders, but just enough so there's a bit of touch there. Legs are leaning against each other and feel just through the touch, just awaken. This lumbar curve, which we're relaxing into the floor because the legs are bent. Now take your hands down the side of your bum, more towards your tail. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing if, if it's not clear. So I was under my lower back then I slid down the side of my bum. Now I'm tucking under towards my tail. And now I'm gonna let my pelvis rock a bit so that the tail goes up towards the sky and the lower back falls into the ground and I cradle my bum or lift my bum a little bit with my hands. So it's like the beginning of Setu Bandhasana. And then relax your pelvis down and just observe what's shifting. Observe what's releasing. how the breath is changing, how the sense of weight is changing. Okay, now we're gonna take the hands and put them on the belly. So look what I'm doing. I, with the heel of my hands, I'm between the crest of my ilium, my, my pelvic bone and my lower ribs. I'm in the soft belly bit. And I'm, I'm gathering my belly towards the midline with my hands. Yeah. So I've got my belly in my hands. You know, you got to love your belly, no matter what happens. And the breath, isn't that true? You have to love your belly, even if it gets bigger in certain seasons. <laughs> Just love that belly. And then, so there you are, you're touching it and you're kind of gathering it. So your belly's in your hands. And then I let my legs drop to the right. I'm not stopping anything with my belly hands. I'm just letting the belly be in my awareness. And then I let my legs go to the left. And then I come back and I let my legs go wide and together and to the right. So when you go to the right, it's like you can gather your belly to the left a little. And when you go to the left, you can gather just a little to the right, the belly. And then why push the belly to the center and then together, just be quiet. One more time, legs go to the right, gather the belly to the left, don't, don't force it and then to the left. Doesn't matter if they don't go all the way. And then wide, and then together. Wonderful, and just, just be heavy, just breathing. Yeah. Big feet, lots of length and life through your spine. How are you doing? Good, yeah. The sense of weight is increasing. The sense of, of presence and play, you know, the sense of less compartments. 
it's all you're all of a piece even if there was an injury or pain or an issue that you're always dealing with it doesn't you're still all of a piece okay so let's fold the legs in fold the legs and hands around the knees or behind the knees Keep the legs together, and if they're not quietly together, you can hold them together by holding your hands. Like this, one hand holding the other. So now we've bent the legs even more. So now we're saying something quite profound about the lower back and the whole visceral space relaxing into the floor. So just put your legs in a little bit towards you, yeah. A little, so you can feel the legs come in and at some point it feels like your tail tilts up. Yeah. And then relax that, and that's it. And breathe, and we'll do it a couple of times in your own time. Yeah, you come in, that, yes, and then release and breathe. Yeah. And one more time. Okay, and then we're going to let one leg stay bent. Let's say it's this one. And the other leg, you let it yeah. just like you did before, or, yeah, or straight. That's it. Okay, this looks like nothing, but this is the extraordinary thing that the pelvis can do. That the pelvis, you think of it as all of one blob. But actually the pelvis allows one leg to do one thing and the other leg to do another thing. And maybe you have to go to the toilet and you're trying to catch the bus. And it holds all of these different dynamics and layers of energy. So you'll, you can notice that if you pull the bent leg, which is nice for these structures, you know, and you're lengthening them, but at some moment you start to pull on the other leg, right? Mm. And that's what happens very often we focus on on this and we've lost the the other direction so what's nice is if you let your hands be more around your kneecap yeah why because and and they're very nice on the shins too but the shins are very good for pulling and for having a weight go this way whereas hands on the kneecap give you a weight that goes down, you feel? It goes down into the pelvis and that's a better starting point, I think, down. And what does that do? It lets you relax here, if you see. So now you start to have both directions. You start to have a long leg that can go that way towards the foot, like a river, and a folded leg that's more like a waterfall that's falling down into the and just take a moment to have those two feelings this bended leg that is weighted and dropping and, and maybe you can play again with the side to side and the long leg that is is longing away rivering away from the pelvis yeah if you flex the foot it's great because that for a moment puts a lot of muscle activity and it makes makes you long, right? And then, but then you want to let go, but maintain that feeling like that. Do you feel? Yeah. You what? I think so. Yes, it's not so easy to feel. Yeah. And this feeling here, this feeling of the heel going away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a folded leg and a bended leg. How is that? You can see it on this side, it feels a little bit. I'm not quite sure what. Uh, is it uncomfortable? Um, very, very slightly. Is it? Uh -huh. Do you ever have lower back issues like that? A couple times. Do you? So it could be that. Let's change leg. But what I would do, if, if it was strong or persisted and you wanted to do this for a while, I would roll up something under your back. Yeah, change legs. Did you ever have an injury there or anything like that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, same thing. Hands on the hands on the kneecap. Weight, weight dropping down. So just starting there and maybe wobbling or juddering. Yeah. And then letting this leg go. Is it the same feeling on the other side? No, it's square. No, it's definitely on the other side. Easy, heavy, one leg getting long, one leg bended, the weight, the breath. Okay, and then plant both feet and have both legs bent. And just come back and hang out for a minute and then we'll come on to our hands and knees. Just notice what, what are you receiving? What are you perceiving? What are you learning? What's enjoyable? You know, the past weeks we had a couple of breaks, but we did much more animated sessions. So it doesn't remember that yoga doesn't always have to be very soft and quiet. It was one of Bandas Caravelli's great worries that people would end up just doing puddle yoga. So it, it doesn't need to be, it's just that's what we're doing today, great. So just take a moment to let that in. You're lying on your back for a couple more breaths. Okay, so a lovely way to get from lying on your back to kneeling is not necessarily to do a sit-up. You can do, and sit-ups are great, but the sit-up is gonna take your normal pattern and bring it to the foreground, the, the strong flexion pattern. So what I would propose instead is that your leg, you let your legs roll to the left or the right, and then you let your torso follow, and your whole body, your arms follow, and you come around to sitting like this, yeah, and that's it. And then you're all the way around and you're on your hands and knees. Okay, so think about it. I'm just gonna show you, I'll just show you the image again. So we spent, we spent quite a bit of time, um, you know, finding this, long, soft, easy, making things talk to each other. It's really a passive front bend. And now we're gonna propose this other shape that we play with, this other direction in the garden, which is more back bendy. So curl the toes under, you're on your hands and knees, and just lean back into your sit bones. If you go very far back, you start to go into child pose and your pelvis drops, your tail drops down. So you don't want to go that. You can lean more back into your sit bones. Yeah, so your thighs are no longer perpendicular. Yeah, even more. You can keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. Yeah, to about there. That's a good place to start. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then so we're we're kind of in this leaning into my bum place and you'll notice that your pelvis tips in such a way that you are developing a squirrel's tail so you're it's as if your tail was pointing up and that's what you want as you lean back the tail points up and in fact the sit bones widen away from each other in this position which releases the back of the pelvic floor release the elbows down release the forehead to the ground and you're in you're in the beginnings of squirreling Squirrel. so how does that is that okay the shoulder yeah okay good. so you tell me if it gets irritated 
So every human being, as they go into squirrel, will show places along the spine that are unable to come into extension. They're unable to backbend. I don't mean the big muscles of the back. I mean deep in the body, the front of the spine. <clears throat> and that's fine. That's fine. We all have little restrictions, which are actually the secret garden of the body. That beautiful, tender, mysterious place where somehow the body can't, can't do what you would like it to do. That's really where all the richness lies. But so when I look at Ellie, I can see there's an area here and an area here that are not so free to move in a spine that looks very, very movable. There's also something here, okay? So I don't know if you resonate with that, Ellie. So you do, yeah. So there's nothing to change, nothing to fix and nothing wrong. It's just, that's, your, that's the beauty of your particular secret garden. But what, what's lovely about the relationship of this to what we did before is that what we did before can soften you for this work or integrate if you do it at the end. But what's wonderful about the squirrel is that slowly in a powerfully passive way, can you feel my hand? Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're letting gravity take you where you don't often go for lots of reasons. And because it's a very quiet way of working, you, you're not gonna injure yourself. If your shoulders are bothering you, one arm or both, you can tuck them under. You don't want your shoulders to hurt. Yeah. So what I would do is just widen your elbows a little. Yeah. And just make sure it's comfortable. Yes, do you feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you want to really let you, do you remember the curve we played with, with the rolled up thing under your neck? It's the same here. It may destroy your nose, <laughs> but you allow this curve to happen right up to where the cervicals meet the base of the cranium, the occipital area. Yeah. Okay. So your squirrel tail is growing and you're hanging the spine you're hanging all this tissue, you're hanging the vertebrae, and you're hanging all the organs off in this direction. So you're making a very profound movement. And then you are, you, and you're, it's, you can do it without the toes curled, but the toes curled help your body feel supported. And then you want to let this dribble through your arms all the way through. All the way through, yeah, all the way through. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Are you comfortable? Uh -huh. So now we're going to open up both directions of this movement. So then you under your toes and slowly walk backwards. And you, you can see it on Ellie, but you'll feel it very quickly. Do you see your tail starts to stop being a squirrel's tail and it becomes more like a wolf's tail or a fox's tail until the pelvis is dropping down. Yeah. How was that? Yeah. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's not really stressful. Is it in, he, in the groins? Yeah. It's in the groins, right? Yeah. So if your groins are uncomfortable, you can start by widening your knees a little. That may ease it off a bit. Or, or if it's not so bad, just stay. How is that? Better. Or you can tuck something under there. The discomfort in the groin, often in women, because the pelvises are wider, but also in men because of the relationship of the femur to the, the innominate bone, to, the, to the, that side of the pelvis that it feels like you're leaning bone on bone. So you just move things out of the way. But it's lovely. I can see your back curving. 
the tail is heavy. Can I press like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to start to go back to where we were, but just by walking one arm forward at a time a little bit. It's like you're inching forward. One, <coughs> two, and three. So about here, I can feel that you're pulling on your spine, right? So <coughs> the pelvis starts to come up. That's it. And note for yourself, you see you're no longer in child pose. You're now in squirrel pose or... Right? Yeah. And then you can curl your toes under and you can drop your elbows and just make sure your shoulders aren't unhappy. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you're much further in than you were before. Can you feel? The whole thing is longer. So if you're happy with that, stay. If you're not, you can come back with it. But yeah, there's lots of length now. Length, 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 length. Okay, now we're going to push from the toes and we're gonna develop a head direction as we come through. So your head comes through, your chest comes through, you're on your elbows. Just stay there for a minute, you can go back. You can go forward and then to keep going forward, you have to come up onto the hands and then make sure you're happy with where your knees are, yeah. Yeah, and then go all the way through and let yourself sag as long as it's not too painful. So let your whole, let your whole pelvis sag down. And it's as if you're pushing into your pelvis with your toes. Yeah, so if you, if you have a problem lower back, this can be, if it's not too pinchy, it's a wonderful way of correcting your back. This feeling of toes, pushing into sacrum and then it's lovely you can see how your head is going up yeah so just let that whole spine open up like a fountain up towards the head up towards the head yeah and now we're just going to make our way back 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 to the elbows on the floor and the head on the floor and the squirrel's tail and the toes and then pushing from the toes and reaching with the head, come through the elbows. And this time we're forward again. That looks great, Ellie, all the way through. And this time play with being less saggy, not because it was wrong, but it's only one dynamic. And play like find a middle place where your toes are waking up your belly structures a bit. So you're not all the way down, somewhere middle. And now the right heel goes back and the left heel goes back. That's it. And how is that? It feels okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can move around. You can move around and you can stay here all day, for example. You can bend these, but not put them on the floor a bit. Yeah. And you can say, you can come up on the tips of your toes. You're going forward to see what's over there. You can go back and then you can go up into soggy dog. Yeah, soggy dog. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, so soggy because the knees are bent and also because you're not rushing to put your heels on the floor. But actually you are, you're making a big bend in the toes. I'll go there in a moment. But this is great. How is that on the shoulders? Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Okay. So you can endlessly play with dog. Look where I'm putting my fingers on Ellie. This place here of the big toe. You can endlessly play, can you feel that? You can play with really discovering it. Yeah, that's it, do you see? So by just, because we, we, do, we do a little bit of that naturally and we come off it, but if you move around on it, you, you find it more and more. And you know, this is like flossing. You get your movement is the floss and you get in there 
and you really, that's it. You get right on the joint. Now you're on the joint and then you bend it. Yes, you bend it. That's it. This is where the fountain of youth is. <laughs> get those toes bending. We're all different. So, so that's bending and then the foot can widen a bit and that's fine. But the little toe is important. It's like a whisker, but it's not as important as this. And this in walking, if we're not using this, uh, we start to have hip problems, shoulder problems, lots of issues if this isn't alive. So dog pose begins here. Yeah, that looks beautiful. And then of course you can come up more. You can grow, you can grow, yeah. And the legs may straighten, they may not. You know, one leg may straighten. All of, all of this is, has to do with the way we are spirally, yeah. And I can see how different your shoulders are, you know, how they sit and how your neck is turning. So your ear, this ear is for your little like that, right? Not that you should ever correct that, but that's how your spine is like a rose climbing up, you know, and your hands are touching the mat in different places. So this is where the goodness is as we relax, we start to see how the river winds in the landscape. That's it, is that okay? So you're going up and the more up you go, the more the spine can hang off forever and ever and ever and ever. And get on that big toe, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no right place. There's like a spectrum that you can play with. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Okay, and then just for a minute, keep your tail up as much as you can, but just for a minute, reach up and over with the heels, not down and scrunch, but up and over. What does that mean? It's like you're keeping a space in here. As, yes, do you feel that? Mm -hmm. As you go up and over. So it's like your shins are being lifted up as you go over towards, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. And breathe and rejoice. <laughs> Rejoice, rejoice, hooray. Yeah, up you go. And now we'll just play with the head position a bit. So one thing would be, you know, to tuck under like that and feel that that's how to do it, right? But even more fun is to let the lips hang off your mouth. That's, so, so your head will naturally tilt a bit. Yes, somewhere in there. Yes, do you feel? Mm -hmm. There's a playful, so it's not the crown of the head. Wonderful, and then come down and fall into child pose and just have a rest. Just have a rest and just let all of that in. So if you go back four or five classes, you'll see that we looked at the whole, what's called the salutation to the sun, which is a whole sequence of which this is a part and all of it. And because I'm with Ellie, we, I broke it down and we looked at two main parts of it, but there is the whole sequence of flexing and extending of having limbs supporting these different building blocks of the spine, the pelvis, the chest, and the head, and these, these, these lordotic curves, these, the neck curve and the lumbar curve, how they support or don't support or surprise you in the movements you can and can't do and so on. So you can, if you look back, you'll see, uh, you'll see how those are linked. And then in between, you'll see that we've been playing with the triangle poses. There's a big connection 
between those worlds of movement, flexion, extension, child, dog, squirrel, all those things we've been doing. And then the rotationary aspect of um, the triangle poses, which we'll just finish with in a moment. But if you just come up onto your hands and knees, Ellie. So here we are. Okay, so we were working slowly, which is fine and lovely, but it should never be slow as better, never, because it, it isn't like that. We can accelerate now and have fun and kind of get it wrong as we get it right, kind of being in feed forward, like we're tumbling. So that's what we're gonna do, bend your toes, and we're just gonna reach back and let the squirrel's tail, let the head come down, release into the long extension. Push from the toes, come through, let the head come up. Let the antlers grow. The spine is getting long because of the playful imaginary process. Release the elbows, push with the hands, going back into squirrel, already coming forward like a wave on the beach, all the way through. Let your head grow even more now. Reach back with your right heel, with your left heel. You're long, you can speak to your neighbor or to yourself. Some people love talking to themselves. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, you, Thank you. yeah, exactly. So your voice should be free. Otherwise you're doing constipated yoga and then let the knees bend and the tail goes flying up and then allow your right leg to sail up and it will naturally turn you a bit like a cello let that happen. It's a wonderful way of starting to correct the way the sacrum and the, the big bones of the pelvis and the lumbers at the bottom there work together. And come back down with the leg, come down with the knees, <clears throat> drop into squirrel pose, come through into bamboo cobra pose, long head, reach back with both heels, long bend at the knees up into soggy dog very big on your toes let your left or other leg fly up yeah lots of length letting yeah letting the spine move the leg comes back down the knees come down back onto the elbows and back onto the hands and knees. Very good. Very good. So, and let's just come up to standing. Yeah. Maybe go for just a little walk off your mat, just to, just to, just to be an ordinary movement. Notice what's different. And we've, we've been looking at this. So when you walk, just for, for the ministry of silly walks, let things swing. So your arms can swing, your legs can swing, you feel the heel strike, you're rolling through the feet, you feel this toe hinge that we looked at in dog, you know? So yeah, stop a bit, that's it. So arms, legs, head. Beautiful. Okay, so come back to the mat. Put one foot on the mat, one foot off the mat. We started a bit late, so I'm, I'm going to go over for a few minutes. I hope that's okay. One foot on, one foot off. Yeah, so that will help you see where you are, and it'll help you not step in front of the other foot, which is the thing we often do. And just step forward, but keep that sense of line running down the middle. Wonderful. The step should not be too big in the first variation of triangle pose, because then your weight starts to come on the front foot, which is a different theme. So just a big enough step so that you're on the back leg and you're on that back heel. And then you let your, just throw your arms up. Yeah, throw your arms up. Great. And then we're gonna go the other way across. Big hands, yeah. Okay, great. So the secret of this is that the lower body should not be turning in the same direction as the upper body because then you just get lots of torsion around the knees. 
So a nice way to feel that is to put your hands on your pelvis and just turn the upper body. So the pelvis, that's beautiful, yeah. The pelvis can turn a little if it needs to, which is fine. But if you let the pelvis go completely, you'll feel that it went completely. So that's one thing. And then the other thing, we put the hands on the ribs and we lift the rib cage a bit, lift the rib cage and turn and you will get more rotation as you turn towards the back leg. That's the secret of the beginning of the standing poses in yoga. We stay on the heels, rooted as we breathe, the spine lengthens and does something new. And the lifting is natural when we let the arms go up. So the arms going out and trying to go first. So you can, you can be here and then you lift it. And the arms go up. And yeah, don't, and it doesn't need to be stiff and rigid and like a yoga pose, just long open wings. As the belly button tries to look forward, your gaze is taking the whole middle to upper spine around and looking back and drop. Take a step, rooting on the heels. How do, I, uh, how do I come onto my feet? Yeah, and then just throw the arms out, throw, throw the arms out, throw the arms out. And then <clears throat> if something feels wrong, you can take it apart simply by putting the hands on the pelvis. Yeah, the hands on the pelvis, remind the pelvis to stay with the legs and the belly button to look forward. Then you put your hands on this, and the ribs are lifted by the elbows and fingers. The thumb can go around the back. There's this lovely angle to your ribs back there. This is the body knows about that. Yeah, so you can move your fingers over this little angly bit there. And you're lifting the ribs and you're turning the ribs, but not the belly button, not the pelvis. Then the arms go flying out. That's beautiful. And you've, you've got all of that. Yeah. And, and then you're looking out, this looks great. So just, I'm just gonna release the shoulder a bit. You feel that? Yeah. So there, you see? Yes, did you feel? Mm -hmm. So, and, and if you let go in the elbows, you can be palms up or palms down. That's it, you feel? The shoulder starts and then you take over. Yeah, and so you can be pumped up or down, it's up to you. That's it. And then I just want to come back for you, Ellie. Your tendency in the past was to think, oh, this is a straight spine, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, if you let go just a little there, just in there somewhere, that's it. Yeah? Yeah, it's different from the stiff. Those stiff pictures help you get the pose, but then you're locked into something that's yeah. not helping. Whereas this kind of, yeah. You see, playing with, playing with supinated, pronated arms gives you a view. Yeah, in fact, when you do this, you naturally let go of it in here. Mm. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this together. Thank you, everyone. There won't be yoga next week because we're um, going to be in the middle of our Easter retreat, but we'll be messaging about how yoga continues after that. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.